<laughs> I get it. It's Bill Nye. Science lies. It's 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 a play on words because it rhymes and it lies. That's clever. That's clever. That's pretty clever. It's a shame that it's the only fucking clever thing that's said in this entire video. And on CSI, there is no distinction made between historical science and observational science. These are constructs unique to Mr. Ham. We don't normally have these anywhere in the world except here. Bill Nye's statement is both irrelevant and false. It's irrelevant because even if Ken Ham were the only person in the world who made this distinction, the distinction would still be valid. It's not an argument from authority or from popularity. Of course it's not an appeal to authority or appeal to popularity. He wasn't making that argument. He was just referencing Ken Ham as opposed to just saying creationists. I mean, that was just his words. I mean, it's, it's not like Bill Nye and the rest of the fucking world thinks Ken Ham is the only person that's a creationist. These are not just Ken Ham's things. Bill Nye wouldn't be up on stage if he thought, I mean, if Ken Ham was the only one that believed this. So just because he said Ken Ham's name, yes, he probably should have said creationist better, but that's just because he was talking to Ken Ham and that was, okay, so not the best choice of words, but really. So I don't know what point you're trying to make here, but you're right, it is irrelevant. So is this argument. The second problem with Bill Nye's statement is that it is false. These are constructs unique to Mr. Ham. We don't normally have these anywhere in the world except here. As the biologist and atheist Ernst Mayer said, for example, Darwin introduced historicity into science. Evolutionary biology, in contrast with physics and chemistry, is a historical science. The evolutionist attempts to explain events and processes that have already taken place. Laws and experiments are inappropriate techniques for the explication of such events and processes. Instead, one constructs a historical narrative consisting of a tentative reconstruction of the particular scenario that led to the events one is trying to explain. One of the first things I could point out was that he didn't even bother to try to define uh, observational science or try to show what the distinction is between the two. Um, and since he's not, he doesn't seem pressed to do so, I'm going to do that for him and show him eh, why he's wrong. Here's the funny thing about words, that they have meanings, and those meanings uh, get defined and they get put in a big old book. And these big old books get written because a group of people decide that these words should have that particular meaning, so when we talk, we actually understand what we're talking about. Um, when it comes to the varying fields of sciences, those big words have definitions, and those definitions were agreed upon by that set of people that helped establish those sciences um, for it to make sense and be able to uh, tell the, the differences between those sciences apart. Um, however, Ken Ham just says, fuck that shit, I'm going to make my own definition. But before I get into that, let's just talk about what the original, universally agreed upon definition of words that Ken Ham doesn't really care about and see what they actually have to say. According to Wikipedia, the definition for observational science is a science where it is not possible to construct controlled experiments in the area under study. For example, in astronomy, it is not possible to create or manipulate stars or galaxies in order to observe what happens. Other examples of necessarily observational sciences uh, include geology, paleontology, epidemiology, and much of the social sciences. When it comes to historical science, it's an explanation of past events based on the interpretation of evidence that is available in the present. It's very similar to observational science. We're unable to construct experiments. Uh, for example, we have the fields of science of geology and paleontology. We look into the past, we look into the ground, and we just dig up the bones and the rocks and things, 
and I try to identify how old things are just from that. Um, these are the more the actual definitions that have been agreed upon for years and years and years until Ken Ham comes along and decides that he knows better and that we should stick with his definition. Operational science is an explanation of a set of facts based on a broad set of repeatable and testable observations that is generally accepted within a group of scientists. But what we see here, what Ken Ham does is just scratch out the word operational and puts in the word observational. How fucking disingenuous do you have to be to take a word that has been you know verified and agreed upon by all science and then just go nope I like my definition better I'm gonna put my word in there and if you don't believe me click here read the paragraph and see that he Ken Ham says it himself as Kansas State University immunologist Scott Todd has said even if all the data point to an intelligent designer, such a hypothesis is excluded from science because it is not naturalistic. Here's what should be noted about this. This quote was taken from an immunologist from Kansas State University named Scott Todd. Uh, it was a talk about the Kansas Board of Education's 1999 decision to eliminate the required teaching of evolution in public schools. This was not some sort of scientific or philosophical paper, it was this guy giving his, his view on the matter. If you go look up this quote, and I insist you do, is you'll see how creationists' websites have this blasted everywhere. However, what you won't see is the entire quote. But, you know, to be honest, is anybody really surprised that the creationists would engage in quote mining? Now that we know that the creationists are quote mining, let's see what he actually had to say. Most important, it should be made clear in the classroom that science, including evolution, has not disproved God's existence because it cannot be allowed to consider it, presumably. But hold on folks, there's more. He also then said, of course, the scientist as an individual is free to embrace a reality that transcends naturalism. So what do we learn from this? Well, we learn that once forgiven, now free doesn't really look up his sources because he's seen them on enough creationist websites and I'm sure they're not quote mining, but it turns out they are. We see that this person, is uh, this Scott Todd, is... Uh, not some dogmatic anti-theist. He goes off into saying that yes, the scientist is more than welcome to uh, put their own individual spin on it. However, he is still arguing for, uh, I guess you would call it a methodological naturalism or maybe an epistemological naturalism, um, where yes, science basically can only understand and, and study and observe what is around us and in the entire universe and everything that we've observed so far has been explained by uh, natural causes. It may be possible that there is some other cause, but for the time being, we don't see it. But we have to go on assuming, you know, we learn things by assuming natural causes. Being able to make predictions being able to uh, see the observations and the empirical evidence for those natural causes, make those predictions, and then, and then learn more and more. They argue that so far, any supernatural cause having no predictive power and no empirical evidence to be able to study is terrible for trying to make predictions and understanding the world around us because there's we have nothing to go by except that God or whatever did it. That doesn't help us learn anything new. We have to go with what we can actually use in science to be able to understand the world around us and the universe around us. So what this guy is just mentioning 
to this post. It's not a scientific paper. He's just saying, look, if we're going to be teaching this to our kids, we have to teach them the natural causes for things because it's the natural things that we are able to scientifically observe and understand or what is able to help us make predictions and help us learn more things. If we teach these kids God done it, then we don't get get anywhere with it. They're more than welcome to believe it, the, the source of that, if they want to. But we want to teach them the actual science. Bill Nye is only willing to accept natural causes for the creation of the universe. Bill Nye, like most scientists, tend to fall along the lines of methodological naturalism or epistemological naturalism. Like I said before, basically just saying, look, it's possible there's other stuff, but for right now, we really just got to focus on the things that we can actually observe and make science do, do science with and all that stuff. There may be metaphysical things, but we can't study it, so uh, let's just go with, you know, what we know. You, once forgiven, now free, and all of your creationist buddies like to lump us up in that little, little bucket that you call metaphysical naturalism, where we say that only naturalism is true and that anything else is irrational. Yes, there are some famous atheists that say that. Uh, maybe Matt Dillahunty, I think. For sure, Richard Dawkins, he has said that for sure. But that is not everybody out there. That is not every uh, scientist out there because science can only go so far and we're completely aware of that. That's why we're methodological naturalists and not metaphysical ones. We, for the most part, are not making those claims. We're just saying we don't know. We don't. We can't. We can't verify anything that's supernatural. So we're just going to do with what, what what we can and what we do have, because it so far has been really good for us. So, quit it. That's like a detective who finds a victim with six gunshot wounds, but is unwilling to accept that an intelligent agent was involved in the murder. Do I really need to go into that whole spiel about how science works again? Empirical evidence, observation, making predictions and stuff like that? Didn't I just finish saying that? Well, I'm, I'm not going to say it again. Well, other than what I just said now. It's explaining that I'm not going to say it. But honestly, if you're going to sit there and say that it's so obvious that God exists and God did this or whatever, that it's, it's comparative to... Uh, you know, six gunshot wound and him just looking at that going, eh, no, nope, must have been natural causes. Now, first, you need to prove how obvious it is, because if it was really that obvious, uh, there would be more uh, Christians that were uh, young earth creationists like yourself. You wouldn't be like that 30 percentile group of Christians that believe that. That's probably my favorite part. It's the fact that it's not atheists versus Christians. There's plenty of Christians that stand against young earth creationists. So, eh. I follow the evidence where it leads. You do follow the evidence where it leads. But where you get your evidence from is your problem. You're getting it from people like Ken Ham. People that have been known, and as I've shown tonight, took a word, observational science, its definition that had been already agreed upon by the scientific communities and, and the dictionaries and all that stuff about what it actually does mean, taking that word observational out from that definition, kicked aside the word operational science, put the word observational in there so Ken Ham could try and make a distinction between uh, historical and observational science that really wasn't there before. It's the same man that took a immunologist words out of context when it was a discussion about teaching evolution in schools. Uh, a man that was most likely, and like most scientists, a methodological naturalist and not a uh, metaphysical naturalist, which you tend to accuse us of because of people like Ken Ham accusing us of that. Uh, taking his words out of context and then quote mining, getting rid of two-thirds of what he did say, and quoting the one line that would make him sound like some dogmatic atheist, um, which he wasn't, um, 
So these people have been known to lie, to deceive, to uh, just change words all willy-nilly just because they feel like it. Yeah, if I believe the evidence, if I follow the evidence, the evidence that you receive, yeah, I'd be a creationist too. Whereas naturalists, like Nye, only follow the evidence within the confines of an atheistic... Atheistic? Really? I think you're also forgetting the 30% of the Christian population that actually agree with us as well. Materialistic worldview. So not only is Bill Nye unwilling to acknowledge the difference between observational and historical science... Because there isn't. Well, at least until Ken Ham went around and changed up the word's definitions, so there would be a distinction. There is no distinction made between historical science and observational science. These are constructs unique to Mr. Ham. He will only accept answers which fit inside his little materialistic box. So let me ask you, who's open-minded? You're right, once forgiven now free. He is totally, totally not open-minded, he's closed-minded, he's unwilling to just accept anything possible than what he already believes. Let me play a clip and show you, because you're absolutely right. I think everybody needs to see this. And so, as far as the Word of God is concerned, no. N no one's ever going to convince me that, uh, that the Word of God I I is not true. Oh, sorry, that was actually Ken Ham. The open-minded one. He's the open-minded creationist that's willing to believe that he could be wrong. Uh, but yeah, let me go back and let's, let's, let's see what, really, what Bill and I really, really said. That bastard, he's just so, so close-minded. But here, here, here's the real clip. Uh, we would just need one piece of evidence. We would need the fossil that swam from one layer to another. We would need evidence that the universe is not expanding. We would need evidence that the stars appear to be far away, but they're not. We would need... Uh, Evidence that rock layers can somehow form in just 4,000 years instead of the extraordinary amount. We would need evidence that somehow you can reset atomic clocks and keep neutrons from becoming protons. You bring on any of those things and you would, uh, inf you would change me I immediately. Wow, did you see that? Bill Nye is such a dick, so hard-nosed. He rejected any proposition that could be thrown at him. Wow, I can't believe that. Wow. Well, it just goes to show, you just never know who's really the open-minded person, right? Well, that's all I've got. Uh, once forgiven, now free. Nice to meet you. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be doing any other videos or anything. I just kind of randomly stumbled upon this because of thick shades. But, um, I hope I was able to show you that uh, Ken Ham is not this... Um, beacon of light uh, nor is he a really good source of evidence for you he's been as I've shown he lies he distorts he deceives he makes up words to fit his own definitions tries to put uh, scientific definitions you know on its head uh, just to fit what he would like to see um, misquotes people quote minds them misrepresents them uh, uses bad fucking science on all accounts. Um, so, I don't know. Probably won't change anything, but I just had to say something because this was... Uh, this, I was actually kind of pissed at first uh, when I saw this video. Uh, but, I, I'm done. I'm out. I'm going to bed. This is Atheist Chef signing off. Peace.